Well, hello there and welcome to this Mean Well Elsewhere on the topic of Jamestown, which is part of our year eight curriculum. In what ways was the world turned upside down in the 17th century? So we are going to focus um, in this Meanwhile Elsewhere all about Jamestown and how that became a colony in North America and was in actual fact one of the first uh, British colonies that was set up in North America. And this very much created the foundations for what later became the British Empire, which you're going to be learning more in detail about um, later on in your year eight curriculum. So just to focus in on chronology, the Jamestown colony was set up in the year 1607 during the rule of King James I, hence the name Jamestown. You can see there the rest of the 17th century in terms of the different monarchs, King James I, King Charles I, the interregnum or the Commonwealth uh, when there was no monarch in England between 1649 and 1660. Um, the role of King Charles II, James II, um, and then William III and Mary II, William and Mary. So that's where the Jamestown colony fits in. Um, it's a couple of years after the gunpowder plot, which was in 1605, and four years after the death of Queen Elizabeth I, who died in 1603. So the main historical concepts that we're going to learn about in this learning, um, first we're going to talk about a settler, a person that creates or establishes a new place to live. Now, just a little bit of note on language here. Although the word settler is often used, it's actually appropriate to refer to, quote, settler colonists, as these new lands that were being um, settled were not actually empty, but being lived on by indigenous peoples. And we'll talk more about that um, in a moment. A colony is an area or country under the control of another. So Jamestown became a colony of Britain. Indigenous means natives, people who are original people to have lived in a particular place. Now, in America, we refer to the indigenous peoples, and um, sometimes they have been referred to as Native Americans, but it's more appropriate to refer to those people as indigenous peoples. Virginia Company was a company given a charter, the right to set up a colony in Virginia, in America. Uh, and the name Virginia actually comes from Elizabeth I, who was known as the Virgin Queen because she never married. An empire is when one country controls other countries, such as the Roman Empire or the British Empire or the Mughal Empire. So let's talk about this, this settlement of Jamestown. So in June 1606, King James I granted a charter to a group of London entrepreneurs and the Virginia Company to establish an English settlement um, in the Chesapeake region of North America. Now in December of that year, 104 settlers sailed from London with company instructions to build a secure settlement, find gold and seek a water route to the Pacific Ocean. This settlement and colonization, because that's what it was, um, was the beginning of the state of Virginia. You can see there an image of King James I and you can see some maps there showing you some of those um, early settlement colonizations of America. So on the 14th of May 1607, the Virginia Company settlers landed on Jamestown Island to establish an English colony 60 miles from Chesapeake Bay. Discovery of the location of the first fort shows that its site was secure. It was in a place where Spanish ships could not fire on them. Within days, the colonists were attacked by the Powhatan tribe, who were one of the indigenous peoples of North America, and of course, people who were already, already living there. Now, the settler colonists spent the next few weeks working to build a wooden fort. Its walls formed a triangle around a storehouse, a church, and a number of houses. Bulwarks, which are raised platforms for cannons, were built at the three corners to defend against possible Spanish attack, as the Spanish had colonized um, large parts of North America as well. Disease, famine and attacks from the neighbouring Powhatan tribe made life very difficult for the people living in the settlement. So there you have it. There's that very famous map of the first colony at Jamestown. And that's James Fort at Jamestown, that very distinctive triangle shape that we've got there. So early problems for the settlers. Chief Powhatan died around 1618 and his brother took leadership of the indigenous peoples of eastern Virginia. In 1622, they ordered a surprise attack on the English tobacco farms and settlements. More than 300 settler colonists were killed. A last minute warning spared James Fort itself. The attack on the colony and the mismanagement of Virginia Company convinced the king to take away the Virginia Company's charter in 1624. This meant that the colony was now owned, uh, was now owned by the king. 
Now, I know the language, um, although the people who colonised America are often called settlers, remember, it's really important to know that indigenous peoples were already living there. So it's more appropriate to refer to settler colonists to remind us that this was, of course, colonisation. So who's John Smith? Um, he's another important person. So in the summer of 1608, John Smith um, led two expeditions out from the fort at Jamestown to explore and map Chesapeake Bay. Here you can see what he found. On the map you can see shoreline, rivers, tributaries, bays and islands, more than 200 indigenous people's towns and their names, illustrations of Powhatan, a paramount chief, and of a Susquehannock warrior described as the goodliest man we have ever beheld. So you've probably heard of Pocahontas as well. Um, so the settler colonists sometimes traded with the Powhatan tribe. In 1614, Pocahontas, the favourite daughter of Chief Powhatan, married tobacco grower John Rolfe. And for a few years after this, things went very well for the Jamestown settlers. Pocahontas became the first of the indigenous peoples to convert to Christianity. And in 1616, she travelled with her husband to England. She spoke English and wore clothes like the English and was invited to the court of King James. The House of Burgesses was an assembly or meeting of elected representatives from Virginia that met from 1619 to 1776. This gave the settler colonists a say in how things were run and in the finances of the settlement. From 1619 until 1643, elected Burgesses met with the governor. After 1643, the Burgesses met um, separately as the lower house of the General Assembly of Virginia. The House of Burgesses met even after Jamestown was a royal colony. They wanted to have a say in how things were run. This could cause problems later if the king in England disagreed with what the House of Burgesses was doing. So a summary of our learning about um, Jamestown. In the early 17th century, people from England began to settle and colonise other countries. The Jamestown colony is one of the first examples of an English colony. The first colony faced lots of challenges. There were tensions between the settler colonists and the indigenous peoples. John Smith made a map, which is a really useful historical source for telling us about this time in history. Pocahontas challenged English views about indigenous peoples. Jamestown is historically significant as it shows the beginning of colonisation. So just to give you a little bit of a bigger picture and give you some foundational knowledge, the Jamestown colony was a key event in sparking off the British Empire. Britain eventually established the 13 colonies over in North America, which they um, held until the American War of Independence. And you can see a map there of those 13 colonies that Britain held, um, including a place like New York, Pennsylvania, Virginia, of course, where um, the Jamestown colony was, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Um, Tensions between indigenous peoples and colonizers would continue. Indigenous peoples were colonized by European settlers and then the new country of the USA. Indigenous peoples, though, still live in the USA today, and there are over 9.7 million indigenous peoples in the USA, and they make up 2.9% of the population. More than 160 indigenous languages are spoken in the USA today. And there you have a map of indigenous peoples living in the USA today. So thanks for watching um, that uh, Meanwhile Elsewhere, a um, really significant event that we learned about there, about the establishment and creation of the Jamestown colony. And hopefully you can see that in a little bit of wider historical perspective about how important and influential this event was. Thanks very much for listening. Goodbye.